What's going on everybody? My name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on the numerical uh, on numerical Python package NumPy. So in this tutorial, we will be continuing with what we saw in the previous two videos and then go, we'll be going one step further. And now in this video, we will be looking at uh, Fourier filtering and spectral differentiation. Essentially, if you have a signal, let's say, and if you want to remove certain components of the signal by, I mean, certain high frequencies or certain low frequencies or any particular frequencies, you want to remove them, all right, you might need to do some filter, data filtering. And uh, I'm going to show you an example as to how you can filter that using once you get the FFT values. Also, once you get the FFT values, I'm go also going to show how you can do differentiation in the spectral domain and then invert the data back to the time domain or the spatial domain and then see what happens all right so let's actually get started uh, uh, first uh, as we, first we need to set up a domain with 1000 points i'm going to keep the d domain to b domain having a length of 100 so this can be interpreted as a domain wherein the there are spatial waves spatial waves uh, occurring in a domain wise periodic which uh, and uh, this can be considered as a domain of 100 meters or a time period of say 100 seconds like that so this is going to be the angular frequency variable variable essentially to make all the signals 2 pi periodic within a given domain and uh, i have i create three different components over here y1 y2 y3 all these have the different uh, amplitudes and different uh, wave numbers that is number of waves in the domain i mean and this is my true signal over here First, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a true signal with, in which the component 3 is absent. I'm going to call it ACT, ACT. So act, this signal is going to have the true signals Y1 and Y2. It's not going to have Y3 in it. And this derivative part, I'll come to, I'll come to you about in a moment, after some time. So these are the preparatory steps. You create the frequencies, you create the mask value, you create the mask, thereby you chop off, I mean you mask out half the the frequency especially negative frequencies and this is the number of waves and this is the circular waves as in uh, uh, this is just another component that uh, that will come f that will come when we're looking at the differentiation differentiation so once you calculate the fast Fourier transform values all right uh, you can do a large variety of width with it so let's actually go into the Fourier filtering what do you do is just make a uh, create a new variable and just make a copy of these uh, 50 values because in this variable we're going to do a lot of manipulate we're going to do some manipulations and what i want is and uh, i just want to remove uh, signal number three and this signal number three has 20 waves in that particular domain so it corresponds to this y3 corresponds to wave number 20. so what i do is that i remove in that particular data in that particular fast Fourier transform values 50 values if at all I come across uh, a wave, come across a wave number whose magnitude is 20, whose magnitude is 20, all right, I'm going to set, I'm going to uh, remove those frequency component value by putting it as zero. That's it. That's about it. Like if you want to remove any other component, let's say, let's say uh, uh, wave number 10 or wave number five or something like that, you just you just put in an appropriate condition over here. And then set it to zero, and thereby you are just uh, essentially chopping off, chopping off all those uh, frequencies that you don't want over here. And once you do that, once you do that, this modified uh, modified value, you just invert it into the real domain by ca calculating the inverse fast Fourier transform. Now note, now just make a small note over here. Even after you do the inverse fast Fourier transform, the data that you're going to get will have some complex values, but those complex values are going to be so small that uh, they, 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 ha they have to be, uh, how do I say, truncated because they don't add much to the signal and they're just like, a trunc they come because of rounding off and truncation errors, so you can essentially remove them. So uh, to make that possible, just uh, uh, use np.real, thereby chopping off all the unwanted imaginary components all right you are not losing any accuracy that by that way so it's fine uh, or you can use np.abs to do it whichever way you f whichever way is fine although, although you know what i think we'll try both and see what's happening all right now we'll talk about this derivative concept in a, mo in a moment what did i do yeah okay so now let's actually plot this color i'm going to comment out this region and uncomment this region so I'm just going to give a title 
and then we'll end a figure I'm going to plot the original figure an original plot uh, original curve which is ACT which is the actual signal and I'm going to plot the filter data which is the filter data we got after doing manipulations in the in the, in the frequency in the spectral domain and now let's actually run this fellow and see what exactly happens now here you go the original color original signal is in black whereas the uh, I mean, whereas the filter signal is green and if you look at it it's a decent it's a pretty decent match now if I were to be if I were to zoom in this a little bit yes there is a small er there is a small a small error over here but uh, that is only if I were to zoom in zoom in so seriously so so picky if I were to be so picky about it now if I were to look at it when I were to look at it on the overall this is an incredible match this is an inc pretty incredible match all right so if this uh, you know if this error value is convenient for, is okay for you in some cases where the errors are even minimal if this error error range is can be okay for you and you're de you can deal with that you can actually use this filtering mechanism and proceed further it's pretty simple it's pretty simple on the other hand if you want uh, to do a lot more uh, filtering let's say a lot more filtering let's say you might um, you you are welcome you are welcome to try so this is like a good uh, first hand example so this is a Fourier filtering. Now let's actually talk about uh, now let's actually talk about spectral differentiation. So for that I have to create an original signal first. So if y is my original signal, so this is going to be my true derivative. The true derivatives obtained by you know convert this converting this cosine into a sine, this sine into a cosine, and this sine into a cosine over here and then multiplying each and every individual component by omega and uh, and the frequent and the num frequency uh, my essentially multiplying the, this multiplying each and every individual signal components with this coefficient that's it so omega is on the outside multiplying uh, all the other components the individual components are multiplied by the way, number of ways so this is minus pi because when you convert from cosine to sine derivate they derive it we were doing a derivative differential i had to put the sign we take care of the sign convention and there it is these are all cosines so this is our true derivative signal now let's see how this can be done in the how this can be done in the derivative space i mean the spectral space so for this i need this particular wave number called the circular wave number which is actually the actual wave numbers multiplied by omega Omega. This will uh, so if you look at it, if you look at it, uh, when I calculate the um, spec, um, when I calculate the derivative, I take the original signal and then I calculate the derivative. And after I do do that, after I do that, I multiply this by the omega, omega, and the wave number, and the and the wave number essentially. That's it. That's it. So that's why I need this n waves underscore two pi. Where this is going to this is going to be the product of my omega and my wave number and my wave numbers. So what I do is that uh, where is it? Yeah. What I do is over. Here, I just take the FMT values, multiply multiply the wave numbers and uh, omega, omega, and also I need to multiply this by the uh, imaginary number i, or else root of minus one. I need to do that since this is fast. This is Fourier transform. Uh, if it's a Laplace transform, I, you don't need this. You just need that s value. Anyway, so this is it. Once you do this, you get the derivative ready. And to convert the derivative and the frequency domain into time domain, you just have to do what you did exactly in the exactly as in the previous case. You take in the values, you convert that into inverse you convert that into time domain using the inverse fast Fourier transform algorithm, and there will be some a little bit of uh, uh, what do you call there will be a little bit of um, uh, imaginary component imaginary numbers accompanying it that you can essentially trunk. Uh, uh, chop it off chop it off by using this real command all right so now if you do that now we now once that is ready you have the data now you can plot these and see it for yourself and then okay you now what let's look at both of them and there you go on the left i have figure two wherein we have a we have a good data filtering that it came out pretty good and this and this is our figure four. This is our figure three, wherein we did the uh, derivative and the using the spectral methods. And you see, this came out pretty good. 
uh, if you had to look at the individual components over here, they they are pretty decent actually. They're pretty decent actually. Only if I zoom in pedant to only if I zoom into a pedantically small distances, I'll notice a big uh, I'll notice a big uh, spacing. On the other hand, if I were to look it on the out or uh, outside, there's hardly any difference. Looks this is a pretty decent match. And uh, for most cases, you you can go and get along with this. This is this itself is good. But if you are a little bit pedantic, then you might have to do a little more. Um, this accuracy is not good enough for you. Then you might have to do a little more work with it. But hey, this is a starter video, so you are just doing only basic additions, basic uh, work. So I say this is pretty decent. All right. And uh, now uh, something that's actually struck me while doing this. What if instead of real, I put ABS? Do I will I notice something different? Even I'm trying to play around with the code over here. Actually, I'm done with the tutorial. I'm just playing around with it right now. I I want to see if this is going to make a big difference. Oh yeah, this is going. This is making a big difference. All right. Oh yeah, of course, of course. It's going to put the negative values as positive values as well. What am I thinking? Obviously, this is going to screw it up. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> That's in. Uh, how did I? How did I forget that? Anyway, so don't do the ABS thing. Let's go stick back with uh, you know real value. I'm actually control uh, zing this, and I do this. Yeah, now we're good. Anyway, that's about it. So. In this video, we covered uh, covered the inverse Fourier, fast Fourier transform, and also we did Fourier filtering and spectral differentiation. Hope this video is good. Hope you like this video, and hope this is informative for you. And that's all I have for you all in this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.